Uh, joined with my student Andrews and my colleague Nigel from the math department. I'm from computing at Kingston. My name is Eckhard Flügel. So let's talk about chaos based image encryption using an AOMT mode of operation. Now, this is a technical topic, but I'm trying to give a non technical presentation. I hope that's, that's okay. So let me just motivate what we're trying to do here. So the topic is encryption. Now, encryption is obviously a very popular tool in cryptography. It's kind of reasonably well established and we know that we have um, good algorithms to take information and the key and then lock it up and keep it safe and then later we can decrypt it again. Um, so what we are looking at now is the, um, the type of data we're trying to protect. So we're trying to establish confidentiality of, uh, of images because images are becoming more and more prevalent in all sorts of uh, applications such as biometric data perhaps thinking of fingerprints or retinal scans or perhaps medical imaging, where there's an obvious need for privacy and uh, security. So um, what's the deal with images? Well, images are usually um, big bulk data, so it might be a little bit time consuming to encrypt them. And also they have a lot of um, patterns, they have a lot of um, structure in them, correlation between the different pixels. So it might be particularly important to um, not preserve those patterns in the encryption process. So um, traditionally, the um, area of chaos-based encryption has been looking at images, and that's how we became interested in it. So we're basically thinking that that's some kind of new um, perspective, perhaps, to find new types of encryption. And hence our contribution here, it's primarily a, a practical one. I mean, we have designed actually a novel image encryption scheme, um, although the main contribution really is on the what we call the mode of operation. I will explain later what mode of operation is. But um, we have basically used some standard techniques, different building blocks from the area of chaotic encryption and have designed our, our novel scheme, but then have combined this with the AONT mode of operation. And then we have implemented this algorithm, we have evaluated it, uh, we have used MATLAB as the, um, the programming language, and we can basically show that the AONT step, which basically gives us the additional security, is actually very efficient. So it seems uh, a lot more security with a, a small price to pay, so to speak. So um, what is chaos-based image encryption? So in chaotic, uh, in, in chaos theory, we're looking at specific maps, chaotic maps, which have certain properties which we believe are useful for security. So we might have seen popular images of fractals. They show you all these complicated structures of the, the Mandelbrot set, for example. These kind of maps, they basically um, respond quite um, unpredictable towards small changes in the input. And that's basically what gives us a good diffusion, so a, a good uh, property for using them as building blocks in encryption. Now, this is a very different approach to the normal, let's say, algebraic approach when you design algorithms such as maybe AES, the advanced encryption standard, where you're doing module arithmetic, module certain prime numbers. Well, um, here we are actually doing floating point arithmetic, um, which is very different, and that's perhaps where the, the, the novelty and the interest is. We don't completely understand yet fully the, the potential of these techniques. Um, one of the drawbacks might be that they are a little bit slower than the, the kind of finite field operations. So that's one thing one still has to overcome. But um, what we're looking at now is um, symmetric encryption. So in symmetric encryption, basically, when you think about it, you can do two main things. You could either um, substitute your input plain text with something else, or you could take it and rearrange, rearrange the order. So we have substitution and transposition ciphers as the main building blocks. So in the past, people have identified suitable chaos, uh, chaotic maps to do this. So for the substitution ciphers, we use the logistic map, and we use a um, two-dimensional Baker map for the transposition cipher. So what is the logistic map? Now, I don't want to certainly bore you with any maps here. This equation simply means that if you take an input parameter, so that's going to be a, a real number, and you um, feed it into the equation and you keep doing this, let's say 100 or 200 times, then eventually um, something might happen. It might happen that actually um, it converges towards the same value. So then you would be in this area here. So this would be the, the converging value. And for the security, that's obviously not very useful. It's fairly predictable. When you get into this range, so the input parameter, and here 
apologies, it says mu, although you might not be able to read this. Uh, mu is actually r in my equation. So if you get into this area, then you have two values. So it's oscillating between two values. But if you go even further, then it gets more interesting. So here, if you just say between this parameter 3.57 and 4, you will be here. And this is where you get uh, chaos. So basically, you can't really predict what's happening with your values. You are creating pseudo-random numbers. And that's exactly what we want to use the logistic map for as a random number generator. Secondly, the um, Baker map is a chaotic map from the unit square to itself. And it's got very good diffusion properties, meaning it moves things around in a very good way. For example, if you look at this image with the um, round circle in the middle, then applying the map basically completely disperses it, doesn't it? And um, the, um, the key that we're using here is to do with the properties of the slices that you use in the Baker map. The name of the Baker map is because you're thinking of dough that you're slicing up and kind of kneading together again. So a, um, a convenient tool to implement um, a transposition cycle. So this is basically the, um, the generic architecture of the algorithm where we are proceeding in a certain number of rounds and the input plane text or plane image would um, experience a substitution followed by a transposition and going back to the beginning a certain number of times and the key itself here will be following a certain key schedule so that just means per round we take certain bits of the key and feed this into um, suitable initial values for the logistic map, leading to the specific substitution cipher. And same for the, the Baker map. So this is the um, generic design, and um, I'm omitting the details on the exact key schedule and how we go about doing it, because that is fairly technical. So we've explained now how we use certain chaotic maps to implement our, our algorithm.